You're probably wondering what that means. It's an unpronounceable technology symbol that's meant to be typed. And my slides are in chronological order, so we're going to flow through them. From a different angle about this, at the same time that these social networks uh, were emerging on the scene, so were the physical hardwares of communication technologies. These are site-specific photographs that were created in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. And I make temporary sets in the studio that speak of possible aesthetics of wireless data. Um, as you can see here, it appears that it would be created in three-dimensional programs or something like that, but it's not. These are all handmade uh, sculptural components with fireworks encapsulated in time, shot in complete, complete darkness. And um, as this work evolved, I wanted to lose the technology hardware because we're all used to that being in our neighborhoods. It's uh, on every new corner. It's everywhere that we're around. So I started to think about new abstract ideas without the technology, uh, communication devices in place where how do we understand a blossoming of ideas or how do we distribute this wireless data in communication? Does it roll along buildings like waves? Does it reflect and bounce and is, and is organic? Is it sexual? Does it replicate? How do these things happen? It's not this straight line between you and your phone. It, it's on organic waves, carrier waves. So I started thinking about these things in organic um, ideas and natures and ecosystems. They're living objects that create this data and bring this data to us. So it creates this really interesting idea of what does it look like when you receive a text message? What does it look like when you uh, receive a call or there's a cluster of calls in one neighborhood? Is this something that could be sculptural and exciting and organic? So as this happened, simultaneously I'm working um, continuously with technologies as they evolve. So for me, it's very difficult to even, in the future, predict what I'll be working on. This is about the hardware technologies. So these are decased iPod sculptures. And iPods revolutionized the way we organize and distribute music. So I decided that I would take these iPods apart and take them from being an individual content device into a freestanding video sculpture, where we would all interface with them together and have dialogue about this. Um, as you see, the arrows signify velocity, direction, and evolutionary change. Um, if you notice on these, these are fiber optic networks. And all of our communication data now is living on these fiber optic networks. So why not use this as a raw material for the creation of art? Let's use these systems as aesthetic systems and try to talk about these complex mini systems. So here's an example of taking seven iPods networking these together and creating an ecosphere, like a coral reef of biodiversity, where this becomes something where they function together, instead of all of us in our, you know, looking at them in our own eyes and not sharing this information. So as I'm working with these unseen forces of wireless data and these abstract ideas of technology, also religion is this unseen phenomenon. Is there a way that we can, in the future, understand religious ideas in a different and unique way. Um, if we were to build a new cathedral or a new chapel, doesn't it seem fitting that we would integrate new technologies? Um, for instance, if you're in an old cathedral in Spain and you look around at the old work, and, but then you realize it's electrified, the sound's amplified. So where do you draw the line between what happens in the future with trying to create an awe-inspiring experience of something that's unseen but only felt? So this really relates to the wireless data type thing, but it keeps evolving over time. So as this is happening the same time with the iPods, I'm starting to, starting to become interested in this space between me and the screen. What happens here? This is also carrier waves and organic waves carrying this information in this unseen space. So what happens here on these LCD screens is trying to utilize this underutilized sculptural territory. You know, it's somewhere that this is a space that sculptures aren't created. So what happens here on these pieces is that I photograph uh, in complete darkness the sculptural components and try to relate them with a two-dimensional image. So it's a collaborative experience between 3D, 2D, and these plasma screens we all have in our houses. It's very important that these become raw materials for artists to use. These are not for us to consume content and consume entertainment and consume data, but these are you know, tools for artists to use as raw materials, same with the iPods as well. Working over time with these technologies and embedding LEDs and fiber optic systems, I realized that that's the nature of life. 
and the, and the nature of life is emitting light and sound and data. So these are based on genetic images. They're photographs, again, temporary sets, lots of times room size, and they're hand lit with LEDs, maybe three minutes time of long exposures, smoke and fog and projections and water, and this energy becomes encapsulated in time so that we can visualize this new form of, of data. As you know now, there's so many new forms of um, visualizing the unseen, whether it be genetics or astrophysics or things like that. So I started to try to take these raw materials into genetic organic shapes and think about them as uh, um, models and maquettes for the future of genetics. As this all moves, you know, continuously, I started to think about how nature becomes involved. So these are the newest photographs that I've been working on. This was actually shot in the shoreline in the surf in complete darkness in the middle of the night. And it's interesting to build a fiber optic sculptural system that integrated with the organic nature of the waves and encapsulated time. You can see where there's many explosions and light. Some things have been in motion and moved and others have been you know, stilled by the, the flash of the photography. So what happens for me is this exciting paradigm where um, how organic is this data? Is this data something sterile and uninteresting? Although when you get it on your phone, it's from your mom or it's from your friend, it becomes a thing to think gene data. But where is it in between? So that's really what I'm trying to work on is this interesting idea of the organic nature of the blossoming. <laughs> Pretty quick, I apologize for that.